Yo, what? But, what? When? What are we filming today? Part four. Part four? Oh. Yeah, part four. Yo, what's up guys? My name's Shayna and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today, <laughs> we are filming a video with our special guest. My dad, okay? Listen, if you're new to this channel, I'm a 17-year-old entrepreneur who helps you grow on social media, but someone who has been a huge part of my life has been my dad. Like most of us, our parents teach us shit, kind of, but my dad has taught me quite a few things I know about social media. So that's why I literally brought him on, on an interview, and we get really deep. We talk about a few things, okay? We talk about what it really means to be successful, how to grow a business, the things you truly need that school doesn't teach you. And uh, we about, we're about to like kind of go into some tea, dive into some beef, and it's kind of spooky and it makes me uncomfortable because I've never really talked about these topics on camera. So if you want to know how to be successful online with another successful entrepreneur who's run many businesses, actually, to be honest, my dad's way too humble. So I'm just gonna toot his horn for him. My dad has ran multi-million dollar companies. He went to USC, graduated, you know, computer science. He's worked in Northrop Grumman. He has a wonderful family. So he's not going to tell that to you guys because he's way too fucking humble. But I just want to let you know how proud I am of my dad. And we're about to dive right in. That's what today's video is all about. We get really in depth. So make sure you stay to the very end if you want to know a little bit more about my dad. And we're about to dive right in. I'm so deep into my river. Footsteps lead Hello dad, are you? Go. I never was a weeper Alright guys, so I'm gonna call up, call up my dad and all I want to find out is does he have these same traits and if so, it would just totally make sense and explain the reason why the way I work you know, obviously my dad's my dad so genetically, if he has these traits of a personality disorder type thing who's someone who's crazy or out there I think then I would know why I the way I am. Thank you so much for taking time to take this call. I know you're busy. Um, so I wanted to ask you a few questions. So for everyone who doesn't know what you do, I've done so many brief explanations, but how would you describe the line of work you do and what's your business? I started as an engineer. I help people build their direct to consumer. And lately I've been focusing on strategy. See, I don't know if you can say any numbers or I don't know if you're allowed to, but just for a brief, um, you know, description of like the numbers you work around with. Can you say any case studies you've done or just so people can kind of see the, the numbers you're working around with? I work with the customers that in a, in a, what I call the really early stage um, startups. So it's between half a million to a million. So that's a early and, stage startups? Yeah. Okay. A lot of the, I love you, dad. A lot of the people know that you give me a lot of marketing advice. And one of the things I was realizing was sometimes I act a certain way, like I'm super loud, I'm super, as an entrepreneur who helps other businesses, what is the one tr personality trait that an entrepreneur needs? Like your top one and whatever that is, do you think it needs to be successful? You need that one trait. So what do you think that is for you? So to answer your question, and this is a really great question, I think the most important thing, characteristic or trait that entrepreneurs have is to know themselves. I mean, you need a lot of trait, but if you, if you know yourself, being able to understand yourself, that's a good foundation to run a business. Um, I mean, let's do this. Everyone says, know yourself, be yourself, but what does that actually mean? Like, can you give like tactical advice or share a story? Yeah. You cannot be, um, especially in e-commerce world right now, if you don't be a cover band, I think one of the things they ask for is like, don't try to copy somebody else. Mm -hmm. You cannot be your own legend by copying somebody else. And I see that's probably the most tragic error. You know, somebody would like to do drop shipping. Everybody go to drop shipping. Somebody do Bitcoin. Everybody going to do Bitcoin. And I'm not talking about that drastic, but the same thing happened with uh, people who run brand. You know, today it's spandex, tomorrow is yoga pants and mm. so forth. So having to know and having a long-term plan matters, especially when things not going your way, being able to stick through it. And that's why I think it's the most important foundation. I mean, if you keep on switching your, your flavor of the month, you know, following flavor of the month, then your strategy never really put on hold. And that's what I see a lot of people, their biggest mistake is not being able to through the tough time and even though uh, when things not appear the way you want to go, you know, being able to persist and so forth. So a lot of those traits that important is built on top of this foundation that knowing yourself. Yes, because here's the thing. A lot of people, I think what you're saying to translate is like people chase trends. They build their entire business off short term things because they don't really know themselves. For example, a lot of my 
influencer friends, maybe they all chase views. Whatever works, they'll like chase it, which is a healthy combination of chasing attention. But I think the foundation you're saying is like reiterating that before you even chase um, some a monetary item, like you need to know yourself first. I love that. So I want to know for you personally, do you have an on and off switch? To answer your question, do we have, do I have on and off? I think for me, on and off is is fictitious. It's never happened. If you do running a business, you never really on and off. You never really took off. Yeah. That's why before you get started a business, you got to make sure that this is what you want to do. Because if you if this is not what you want to do, you might as well get a job. Like just for you personally, like I know whenever I post a video, like even if I've never posted, I'm going to start thinking about the next one. Like it's always like this thing. So do you feel like when you work on businesses, like even once you close a client, you're always thinking like, okay, what's next? Like, right. Is your mind always like thinking about the future? Um, and if so, can you give us an example of like when it might get too toxic? Okay, so the reason why this has become toxic is not about on and off. The reason oh, okay. why it become on and off when you become lack of clarity. So if you don't know what your strategy, you don't know what uh, what you want to do, you cannot pace yourself. So for me, having an idea at a weird time, it's a great thing, provided you have clear clarity on your business. Okay. And for me, that's okay. not an... Uh, it's actually assurance for having a lot of idea coming in. And if you don't, you know what they call on and off? What? Get a job. So if you want to on and off, get a job. Pivoting this conversation, I had mm -hmm. a conversation with okay. Haley, Ryan, I, a few YouTubers. So I put you in the circle because here's the thing. Anyone I look up to, success, I think we have something all in common. I don't know what your thoughts are, but you're a marketer. You have to close sales. Do you believe... Kind of re re uh, referring to sociopaths and people who are manipulative. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, Dad, and I know it was like a weird conversation, but you told me um, that you could either use your manipulative power or marketing skills, basically, for good or bad. Can you tell me more about what you think about, you know, marketing and that power of influence, really, like thinking and changing people's thoughts? What do you? Um, what's your thoughts about that? Yeah, first of all, I don't call it manipulative because oh. um, it's it's kind of wrong words. Um, I call it like being able to help people. If you if you have somebody's, you know, have a toothache and and you're a dentist. Did you call that manipulative because you manipulate their teeth? No, you said that, hey, he's helping me to, to kind of um, solve my sales problem. By the way, sales problem is more painful than toothache. So you don't call those dentists as a manipulator. You call them as a angel, heaven, and so forth. So depending on what you're doing and what, what you come up with, if you want to just sales for salesperson to, to make money, then I said, yeah, it's a manipulative. Okay. But if you want to do, you know how many people, brand that come to me and they're like on their last leg, their, their house almost go to full closure, and they look at me like, please help me to go turn around their sales. I don't even have to sell them on this because we're going to work together as a team. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's kind of how I look at it. If you cannot provide value, you cannot be successful in this business. So what the, the sociopath does, though, um, Kind of reading, someone a sociopath is typically someone with a lack of empathy because they can help people, they give value, but only for the benefit of themselves. So I was worried about this whole marketing thing kind of being um, negative because it, it could sound like that, right? Like you're helping someone only to get benefit for you, right? Is that what you're also... That could oh, no, no, no. When you work in a business, by the way, business transaction definition is, if you look it up, it's exchange of value. Both sides going to exchange a value. You providing value to the customer. The customer, in turn, give you value in terms of this cash cash. Now, now you're talking about those empathy and then salespeople. Like, there's a lot of horror story about salespeople, right? Yeah. It's completely different. Those people providing fake value. For example, let's take Jake Paul, for example. He's been a very hot topic lately. He is, people say he's only nice to his fans. Like, he makes meetups and he's, like, nice and, like, kind of caring to his fans only for the fans to like reciprocate it back and buy his products. I mean, that's an example of like value exchange, right? Like you're nice to me, you pay me money, right? What do you think? Is there any value exchange? I mean, Jake Paul's nice to his fans, like, you know, hugging, like, I love you, like, sorry, stuff like that. Is there any value to that? You love, <laughs> love value? You told me that you don't like the word sociopath because it's just another title or label for someone that's not perfect. And going back to it, do you think Jake Paul, YouTubers, do you have to be a sociopath character to be successful? That was the question. Or does it even matter? I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so, but, think so. but I'm not the one that should answer that. You should talk to their fans. If their fans feel like being used or they don't get value, guess what? With YouTube, you just, right? <laughs> so so what I'm saying to you is if, if, 
if you go into relation business relationship and somebody take your money and they don't give you value what do you do to them if you don't get value you go somewhere else that you get value my last question which thank you so much for that so I took basically my first part of this video I took a quiz on if I'm a sociopath or not which by the way I told my YouTube audiences that it's not a productive title to label I'm just using that as a way to describe a very loud personality. One of the studies I've researched about uh, people with personality disorders is you can't judge them until they're 18 and over. I'm currently 17. They're basically saying sometimes people develop a sociopath disorder because of puberty, so they can't really judge if it's accurate. So my question for you is, have I always been like this? Since I was born, you can tell me because you obviously took care of me at one point, or maybe mom can tell you, like my character of being, um, there's a couple traits, right? You told me knowing myself, being um, whatever I do, I just believe in myself. There's a couple other traits saying you have to be sometimes a little bit able to not give a shit of what people think. Or can you tell a story of times where you know for a fact that I've not, this is not just a puberty thing, that I've maybe had this on my entire life or I have this personality? First of all, I think this sociopath thing, I think you probably watch somebody. <laughs> so let me go back a little from the beginning. I'm not the right person to answer that, to be honest. You have to ask yourself, are you sociopath? And the only one, is this a label somebody give it to you and you stick to yourself for some weird reason? By the way, label doesn't mean anything about you. It's just a label. I guess I can't tell if, and this is getting yeah. really deep with YouTube, but I can't tell if I have a YouTube audience because those are the only friends I can maintain because people in real life can't stand me. And I, have a f I actually want to share it. Like, I have a fear that... No, everyone I'm friends with or came in contact with me would leave me one day. So you know what? <laughs> you, it's beyond your control, Jay. Don't have any um, inclination that you can control people, how they like you or not. You, there's nothing you can yeah, do about right. it. You know, if people like you because they like you, that's it. So if they cannot stick, that's not your problem. I'm more worried about if you leave your own identity. That's more worrisome than losing a friend. Can you just share maybe to our YouTube, because I've been telling stories about you. I, I mentioned about you because I love and care about you because you're my dad. But I feel like people just want to hear your experience, firsthand experience of like times where you felt loss of identity, like loss. And I think that word loss or confusion is something that everyone feels. So I don't know if they can tell like a specific story um, that's more vivid to you, because I think it'd be very helpful for people to hear. I'm almost 50. So you're 50? I think that my first 45 years of life, I don't know who I am. So I've just long. recently found out about it. So to answer your question is, um, you know, being an Asian family, we I always, people label me like, oh, Leon, you're an engineer, you're a computer scientist, you're going to be big and so forth. And I bought into it. And, and, and that's, after time, after many, many failures, I learned that that's not me. Even though when I reached to it, I, 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 I was, when you start putting somebody else label, like if somebody said that, oh, you are like e-commerce specialist, you e-commerce guru. And you reach it and you're not still happy. It's just telling you that's not you. So to answer your question, yes, I've been through it. When was the last time you put a label on yourself, someone else put a label on you, you achieved it and you felt empty? Yesterday. What? As long as you live in this world, you're going to go through this conversation. You know, if you ever wake up, I don't know, for me, I always wake up and sometimes I say, man, Leon, you're useless. <laughs> you feel that? I'm a sociopath. So those labels keep on re try to reinforcing into yourself. I, once they start, it stick once, it will try to reinforce yourself. You know, and then the battle never stop. Once it stick, it will never stop until you, you have to live with it. And then you just like, hey, you know, it come to me and I was like, you know what? It wasn't, it is not true. Every day you fi face those a battle about your identity. That's why it's so hard. Something I wanted to share, a lot of people feel like they're depression, you're not diagnosed depression, but like depression you feel, you know, like I'm sad, is actually a reaction of you not doing it right in real life. For example, oh, you are, you're getting weight or you're, you're not feeling healthy. It's probably because your body's telling you you should probably be in the right path. A lot of people though feel helpless that they can't even take control of it. So they just stay and they just set all the place where I'll just I'll just feel like shit for the rest of my life and they don't have that initiative to start. By the way, that's depression. It's also it's label. Your body is always kind of tired to tell you something else. And and if you you have all the power to say that this is not me, try to do that. It's like I'm, if if your body telling you you're depressed or you're fat, you know what? That's that's not true. And try to do that. And what happens by saying that? You start finding yourself because what is. What does fat mean anyway? Everybody has their own relative. You know, for some model, even, you know, like 50 pounds is considered fat, right? Yeah. So, so being able to really focus on your knowing your identity and how you're doing that, you start ripping it off 
all label at a time. We're gonna close off this video. I wanna say thank you for joining me on my interview. You guys don't know how much it means to me because my dad doesn't always love the camera all the time. So thank you so much. My YouTube appreciates it. You guys can check out my dad, Leon Yi. And if he wants to share more of his work, we will probably see him very soon. I'll see you very soon, dad. He's coming to LA. All right, dad, thank you so much for joining. I'll catch you guys later. Oh, Peace out. Okay, I'm dad. always. Okay. Hey, what is up, you guys? I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, if you're watching this right now, make sure you give this video a like and hit the subscribe button below and comment below. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, comment below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Seriously, hit the thumbs up button because it really helps me out. Okay, okay. love you guys.